Hey all and welcome back to the fifth part of the Netcode for Game Objects series. This week we're going to tackle a comment requested feature, which is cameras across the network. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Come join the community on Discord. And if you like the work I do, you can support me over on Patreon. The link is in the description of this video. In today's video, we're going to look at creating independent cameras using Cinemachine and also allow our camera to rotate independently. We're going to look at doing this from left to right, but the same principle will apply for looking up and down as well. Okay, so we're over here in Unity, and the first thing we're going to be doing is installing Cinemachine. So we'll open up our package manager, and then we're going to search Cinemachine, and we'll just take the current version that we've got there. So we'll install that, and now that that's installed, we can close that down. We're going to remove our camera from the scene because we're not going to be using our normal camera. Instead, what we're going to be using is our Cinemachine camera that's attached to our player. So I'll delete that out and we will duplicate our server player and I'll just name him with camera and we'll open up his prefab. I've actually got the arms facing the wrong way here so I'm just going to correct that real quickly. Let's put that over there or so and we might shrink it down a little bit just because it's a bit big. That's fine and we'll delete the other arm Duplicate that and we'll move that across to the other side. And we've got our arms again. Okay, we had to have them facing on that blue axis, which is the Z axis. That mirrors our capsule. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is create an empty object that we're gonna call camera placement. And then inside of that, we're going to be creating a Cinemachine virtual camera. We can just leave that as CMV Cam 1 and we'll also create a normal camera. We can just leave that as camera. And on there, we're going to attach a Cinemachine brain, which I've got here. And we're also going to disable the audio listener. The reason why we're disabling the audio listener is just because in general, you should only have one enabled per scene. And we're going to enable it when we create the character for that user, as opposed to having every single one enabled on the scene. So I'll disable that. And then that should be good. Now what you'll see here is if I click on the camera, the, the angle's a little bit strange and we don't really want that. So I'm going to just move the Cinemachine V cam and we'll drag it back a little bit and we'll just have them a bit centered. We'll remove its rotation. And if I click that again, that looks a little bit better. Move that just a little bit more. And we can play with this over time, but that's fine for now. While we're in this prefab as well, we're going to click on our player and because we're going to be wanting to rotate our player on the Y axis, um, we're going to tick that. We don't need to worry about X and Z. If we were doing up and down rotation, then we would worry about that. But because we're only going to be looking like this, we don't need to worry about doing anything other than Y. And before we get stuck into code, let's just make sure that we update our network manager to spawn our new player this time. So instead of our server player, we're going to be doing our server player with camera. Now, going back to that player, let's open up in Unity our server movement script, and we're going to be doing some adjustments to this. Now, I won't demonstrate this by building the game, but right now, if you were to create a, a version of the game and hit run, what's going to happen is the Cinemachine virtual camera is going to take the latest player's point of view, and you'll still be your own character, but you'll only be seeing the view from the newest player's point of view. And obviously that doesn't work. You only need to be able to see your own perspective and potentially if you have multiple cameras, the perspectives that relate to your character. So we're gonna do what we always do, which is adding in the concept of ownership. And we're gonna basically be setting the priority of that camera to a higher number. The higher number means that it will be the one that gets displayed first. And then we'll set everyone else's camera to a lower priority. We're also gonna be enabling the listener at that point in time as well, so that you have an audio listener in the scene as well. So we can do that using the on network spawn script. So we did actually override this in a previous tutorial, but we don't have this on our current player. So we're gonna create a public override void on network spawn, and you'll see that down there. Now, we don't need the base version of this obviously, but we're gonna to need to add in that concept of ownership. So we're gonna say, if we're the owner of this object, then what we're gonna do is enable the listener and set camera priority. Otherwise, we're just going to set camera priority low. So lower in the numbers means it's not gonna show that person's point of view. So in order to be able to do this, we're going to need to add using Cinemachine, and then we're going to need to create a reference to our virtual camera. So I'm gonna use a, we'll add a serialized field, I think, and we'll call this a private virtual camera Cinemachine. And we'll just call that VC for virtual camera. 
and serialize field, we're also going to be adding a private listener, audio listener, that I'll just call listener. Now we can swap these out. So I'm going to be dragging this in onto the prefab rather than finding it at time of runtime. It's just the way I prefer to do things, but both options work fine. So we're going to firstly enable our listener. So we're going to get our listener dot enable equals true and set our camera priority. So we're going to say VC dot priority equals one. And in the scenario where our camera is not us, then we want to say VC dot priority is something lower than our current one, so that'd be zero. If we were using multiple third-person camera views, you could set this to maybe two or three, and then you know your other characters' cameras could be two and one, and then everyone else's camera could be zero, so that you never go to another player's camera, but you're still able to cycle through other virtual cameras. We're not going to look at doing it because it's not really relevant to what we're doing at the moment, but just something to know. Okay, so now we've got that, let's give that a test. Before we can, obviously we have to attach those parts to our prefab. So we've got our player with camera. I've got two new fields here for my virtual camera over here, and then my audio listener, which is actually on the original camera. And that one, remember, should be set to off to begin with. And that should be fine. We'll hit save, go file, build settings, build. And we're gonna create a new folder here. Just call this 0.07 server movement with cameras and select that folder. Okay, now that that's finished building, create a few instances of this. In a second. Okay, and just remember that because we've removed the camera out of our main scene now, instead of seeing the scene here, you're gonna see nothing until a, camera, a player spawns in. So this server won't have a view just yet, but as I hit client on this side, we should get a view. My player is able to move, that's great. And we should see that my second player should receive his own camera. So he gets his own point of view, and that's good. We don't need to worry about the server's point of view because no one's actually playing from the server's perspective. But you can see here that my two players do stuff, and that is great. So we have independent cameras working now. And what we aren't able to do at the moment is look around. So we want to be able to hold right click and then just change our perspective by moving our mouse left and right. So we'll close that down. In order to be able to do that, what we're going to need is some adjustments to our input actions. So if I open up my player input, the first thing we're going to need is a brand new action. And we're going to call that look around just because it makes sense. And we'll change this one here to a pass through vector two. And in binding here, we're going to change this to the mouse and we want the mouse's delta. So we want to basically be able to tell where we're moving our mouse when we're looking around, and then we're going to read that value as a vector two and effectively shift us in the same line. In order to be able to get the right click action, uh, in the old input system, you would just do input.getButton, but in this case, uh, you can't really do that because it's the new input system. So there's a little bit of a workaround we can do for that, which is if we create a new action, and I'm going to call this right click, and we're going to change this to a value, and we'll change this to analog. Then we're going to change this here to the mouse and the right click button here. So what this is going to be doing is effectively when you are not holding down right click, it's going to be returning a value of zero. As you hold down right click, it's going to be returning a value of one. And if you could feather right click, you would see that it, it, it provides a value on a float between zero and one. So it will scale up to one. But we can tell that we're holding down right click by any time the value is greater than zero. So we're going to be able to check if we're holding down right click doing that. So I've called this one right click, I've called that one look around, delta mouse and right click button. We can hit save on that now. And then we are ready to jump back into our code. Now back in our code, what we're gonna be doing is actually quite similar to this process here, where we have an update method that is going to be able to read a value from what, we've, what, from what we're doing, in this case, our mouse delta or our holding right click. And then we're gonna be doing the same principle of checking whether we're the server and the local player and then being able to move if we are. Otherwise, we're gonna be the client and we're gonna be requesting it. So we're gonna need the same sort of look around server RPC and look around method. So I'm gonna create those two now. Both will take in a vector two because remember we created a pass through vector two. So I've got a private void look around. I'm gonna give a vector two and just to keep it similar, we'll call that input as well. Then we're gonna need our server RPC version of this. So I'm going to create a server RPC. And remember from our previous video, whenever you create a server RPC, it needs to end in server RPC. So this is also going to take a vector two and we'll call that input as well. 
And just like this one here, it's just gonna be calling its method here. So we're gonna be calling look around in here, and we're gonna be passing in the input. So very simply, this is just gonna be look around and pass in input. And then we need to write our actual look around method and our update method. So we'll do the look around method first. So all we're gonna be doing here is calculate the rotation amount based on the mouse delta, as well as uh, rotation speed, so plus rotation speed. Then we're going to accumulate that rotation into a variable, and then we are going to apply that rotation. Okay, so in order to do that, we're gonna to need to create two new variables. The first one is to accumulate that rotation, and the second one is the rotation speed itself. So I will create in here, a serialized field that is going to be a private float and I will call that rotation speed and then a second one here that is also going to be a float and it's going to be accumulated rotation speed accumulated rotation sorry okay and in order to actually do this all we need to do is get a float that we're calling rotation amount and then we're going to take our input that we've received from here the x value because we're only moving on the x and y axis and then multiplying it by our rotation speed. And then we're going to need to accumulate that rotation. So we've got accumulated rotation, and that is going to be plus equals to rotation amount. So we're adding the amount that we've just rotated here, and then we just need to apply it. And we can do that using Euler angles. So if we do transform.rotation is equal to quaternion.euler, and we are doing this on the y-axis, and we're gonna be doing that at zero. Okay, so this will do our look around. Right now, all we need to do is apply that in our update method. And I only wanna apply that while I'm holding down right click. And I'm gonna apply that separately to the above logic just so we can separate it out and you can sort of see the logic on its own rather than merging it all into oh, one piece of code here. So we'll write it independently. So I'll say if player input dot player dot right click, cause that's what we called it, dot read value, and it is a float. And if that value is greater than zero, so that means I'm holding down right click. And again, just remember that you can think of this as the old input.getKey method. It's not the get key down because it's gonna constantly return true while the value is greater than zero, which it will be provided you're still holding down right click. So this is acts like get key, and we're gonna use it that way. So we're gonna need a vector two that we're gonna call mouse delta. So effectively we're creating this line here right now. I'm just gonna actually copy and paste that. We're gonna call that mouse delta. And just remember here, we're reading our look around value and it's still a vector two, so that's fine. And then we're basically just gonna be doing the same checks we did up here. So I am actually just gonna copy this, paste this here. So we're doing an if is server and is local player, then I want to look around and we're gonna be putting in our mouse delta. And if we're the client and the local player, then we want to request look around. So we're gonna say look around server RPC. And we're gonna be putting in our mouse delta again. And so now let's give that a save. And I just remembered up here, I think the rotation we probably should set. So we'll set that to 0.1F to begin with. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna work rotation wise, but if it feels too slow, we can always up this value. If it's too fast, we can drop the value. Okay, so if I click there, I should be able to see, yep, cool, I've got my rotation speed of 0 0.01. I'm gonna go ahead and build this now, and then we're gonna be able to test it out. So we're gonna go build. I'll just override what we've got here. And now that that's built, we'll start up the server over here. And in my folder, I will start two instances again. We'll make you a server, we'll make you a client, and we'll make you a client. We should again be getting our separate cameras so that's good we've got our individual cameras and i should be able to hold right click now and move which i can and you can see here that over the network the camera is actually rotating so if you're watching this one here you can see that cam the player is actually rotating correctly which is good you can see his tiny little arms rotating and you can see that this person's point of view is changing without impacting this person's point of view so we're correctly rotating across the server and we can see that everything is working as intended I should probably build this scene out to be a little more entertaining than just a tiny square nail, but maybe I'll do that as preface before the next video. Okay, and that's all that we're gonna be looking at in this one here. We've now got a camera that operates and acts independently. I have a few more commented suggestions to add in and we'll probably tackle that in the next video. If you have any more and you would like to see them, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.
As always, these videos wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons, so I want to give a huge shout out to Kendro in the Diamond Tier, Pat in the Emerald Tier, Raphael in the Gold Tier, and Lanky Moose in the Silver Tier. If you'd like to support me, the link is in the description of this video, and it's patreon.com slash Thank you guys, I'll see you next time.